So hi, hello everyone. Uh, welcome again to our second session of the uh, Minggu Science Negara, particularly the, uh, uh, the Augmented Reality Content Development Training uh, slash Workshop. Okay, so uh, selamat tengah hari semua. Uh, welcome. If you are if you join us last week, welcome back. So I think there are some new names here also. Uh, yeah, welcome to you. So this training, even for today, it won't be uh, too advanced. So if you are new this week, uh, you still can, uh, I think you still can uh, catch on. Lah. OK, so uh, let me do share my screen first. OK, so last week we have shown that um, what AR really is. You now we played a little bit of game first to showcase what uh, uh, the concept of AR. So it's a very simple game where we uh, tap the number in AR space. So Hugh here can tell me, you know, based on what we learned last week, you know, what is augmented reality is. So if you have any question, uh, you can also uh, uh, use a chat box below. Uh, So uh, I just want to test the chat if it's working. Maybe you can just type in anything in the chat box, see if it's working. Yeah, OK. So who can say what augmented reality is? If you have if you have heard of it before. Okay, so basically augmented reality or uh, AR for short, it's really simple. What we are doing is this uh, overlaying digital information or um, you know, anything virtual, we are overlaying it into the real world. So for example, if you can see uh, from the game here, we are uh, overlaying these buttons here, which are totally virtual, into uh, our real world. So our real world are being captured by the uh, camera, a phone camera. OK. It's a bit different from uh, you may you might have heard of virtual reality before, which is VR, where augmented reality is actually uh, we are overlaying uh, digital information to the real world, but uh, virtual reality is actually a one hundred percent totally immersive virtual experience. So it's uh, augmented reality is like fifty fifty uh, half real half digital, whereas uh, virtual reality is a 100% virtual experience. <laughs> OK, so augmented reality, uh, we can actually use it or experience it in multiple different devices. So I think the most common one is the smartphone, uh, which is very, you know, it's the most accessible option. Uh, we also have the tablet, uh, which have a bigger screen for over, uh, overlay, and also a newer technology called uh, AR glasses, where one of the benefits of using AR glasses is uh, it provides a hands-free experience. Uh, so for example, you might want to, uh, uh, sometimes you are using a smartphone for AR, it can be uh, quite uh, maybe annoying for if you have to hold it up a little bit uh, for very long time. So for AR glasses, it can actually provide a totally hands-free uh, experience, OK? OK, so similar to last week, we also uh, will be organizing quizzes throughout the uh, session today. Lah. So I'm just going to go through briefly on how the quizzes work, OK? Um, there'll be. Uh, Sorry, there will be actually three sets of quizzes. And each set of quiz will have two to three questions. So uh, we will share to you the link later for the three quizzes. But uh, please make sure that in the quiz, we uh, you include your full name in the quiz. Huh? Otherwise, we don't know who you are. 
uh, the winner will be determined based on two things. So first is the speed, uh, who's the fastest to answer, and also you have to answer all the questions uh, correctly. Uh, so there'll be only be two, two, three quizzes, uh, two to three questions per quiz, and the winner will get a RM50 ringgit of uh, cash voucher, which can be used for any um, makerspace uh, program or products. So uh, are you all ready for the first quiz? Okay, please do scan the QR code or use the uh, link we shared in the uh, chat box and do answer the question. I'll give you like two minutes to answer the question. Uh, I just want to remind you, use your full name, huh? otherwise we won't know who you are. Okay, let's go through some of your answers. Huh? So yeah, AR stands for uh, Augmented Reality. Second question is, which technology is commonly used to display AR content? So, uh, uh, yes, you're correct. Both AR glasses and smartphone tablets, uh, they're all used for AR. Huh? And the key difference between VR and AR is, it's very simple. Uh, VR completely replaces the real world. It's a 100% uh, virtual experience, whereas AR overlays digital content onto the real world. So it's a 50-50 uh, experience. So I just want to remind y'all, if you have any question, uh, you can uh, use the chat box in the uh, chat box in the Google Meet to uh, ask the questions and we will help you uh, with your uh, any questions you have, okay? All right, so there is, when you talk about AR, there's actually two types of uh, AR, two types of augmented reality. So the first one you can see over here in my left, is what we call a marker-based AR. 
So a marker-based AR relies on something called a physical marker. And the reason we have this marker is to uh, anchor any digital content we want to the uh, marker. So for example, as you can see here, the person is holding cards, different cards, with a, uh, I'll turn over to the beginning. So for example, if I put the uh, Saturn card, it automatically detects that it is a Saturn card. And so it uh, spawns in an animation of Saturn simulator with Uranus. Uh, as well as Neptune and so on and so forth. So, and when, for example, if you do bring in multiple different cards, it will load in uh, different planets. For example, now we have the Sun, Mercury, and Venus, and it can automatically detect that uh, they have programmed it in such a way that uh, when you load in any other planet, it will uh, orbit around the Sun. Okay. So the type of marker, marker, yeah, one of the advantages is that it can give you precise tracking. For example, because uh, whatever digital content you have, it will uh, track the location of your physical marker. So, uh, for example, the sun card here, no matter where I bring my sun card, if I uh, move it around, the virtual sun object will actually follow the card. But the disadvantage is that it may be affected by uh, lighting or printing quality. For example, maybe uh, you might uh, print a lot of different markers, and maybe one of the markers may not be, have a really good quality, maybe due to uh, printing errors, so uh, you wouldn't be able to track it otherwise. And um, the other type of uh, augmented reality is called the markerless augmented reality, markerless AR. It's similar to uh, what we did last week using uh, Adobe Aero. So as you can see, we had created a solar system, but it didn't need any marker to spawn the uh, AR space, okay? So it typically uses various sensors to anchor our uh, content. So uh, typically the sensors in an AR device, what it does, it's, uh, it tracks in your device location and your rotation. Uh, as well as it uses your camera to detect uh, other surrounding objects in the real world, okay? Uh, so if you compare marker and markerless AR, the advantage of marker is, of course, you get the precise tracking, but markerless AR will give you a greater flexibility since you don't need a physical marker. Okay, so now let's head over to our second quiz. You may scan the code or use the uh, link in the chat box. Again, please use your full name. Huh? Thank you. 
Okay, let's go through the uh, answers. So, uh, okay, what is marker-based AR? So, yes, that's correct. AR that relies on physical markers in the environment to figure digital content, which is the opposite of markerless AR. And our second question was, what role do sensors play in AR devices? Uh, so yeah, sensors are used to track the device movement and rotation uh, so that any other content can be properly aligned in our uh, digital space. Huh? So any questions so far? All good? Okay, if there's no further question, let's move on. Okay, so this uh, last week we have learned actually that AR is used in many different applications. Uh, one such application we uh, went through was the education, which actually uh, is looking into AR widely uh, being, uh, how to say? So is my screen visible? Okay. So AR is being widely uh, explored in education uh, where we can bring in uh, any regular textbooks and whatnot into something that can be animated, uh, such as the solar system we saw earlier. Secondly, we also saw how uh, AR can be used in healthcare, where particularly can guide us through uh, emergency situations. As you can see in the short video there, uh, it's being guided, the person is being guided to conduct a CPR. Thirdly, for gaming, uh, so this was a very popular uh, AR-based game uh, called Pokemon Go. And we have a few actually nowadays uh, using the same concept, uh, utilizing uh, augmented reality in uh, gaming. Fourth, we saw how AR is being used in entertainment. Uh, as you can see in the short video there, uh, this was actually a glass, an AR glass, uh, or oh, sorry, an AR uh, mirror that is uh, used to market the uh, movie. So we can see that uh, the person is just standing there, but it can uh, overlay a, a suit onto him and as well as a uh, call in different characters into the screen. And lastly, we also saw how uh, AR can be used in customer experience, uh, especially in indoor navigation, uh, which is especially helpful since uh, GPS doesn't, uh, it's quite lacking in indoor, such as uh, if you go to a mall, for example, you might want to find a particular shop. Uh, you may use uh, AR to actually uh, find your uh, location. Okay, so other than those, uh, today also I will bring in some new industry where uh, AR is uh, widely being used in. So uh, the firstly is in a uh, manufacturing industry. So AR can actually be used, for example, in a um, in manufacturing plant, you may have a lot of different robots and uh, you know, machineries. Uh, for example, in a automotive uh, industry, you may have those uh, robotic arms. Uh, and most of these robots, they do have some sort of sensors, for example, temperature sensor, vibration sensor. So you could overlay all of this information just by hovering your phone towards the machinery. As you can see in the picture here, I can hold my tab over a machine and I can uh, get some sort of data from the sensor directly to my screen. Uh, other than that, it can also uh, notify the uh, user, the machine operators, if the machine needs maintenance, as well it can, as it can also provide a guided operation guide depending on the machine uh, which is uh, being used, okay? And 
this is quite fairly new also. Uh, AR is being explored in uh, interior design. So we can see here, this is an app by IKEA actually. So sometimes when you buy furniture, I'm pretty sure maybe you have experienced it, maybe you have experienced it, maybe not, but uh, sometimes you buy furniture, it looks good in the, uh, maybe in the shop, but when you bring it back to your house, you know, to your room, uh, it may not actually look that good in your room. So maybe it doesn't, uh, it's too big, too small, maybe it doesn't feel, fit your uh, room style. So with AR, you can actually look at exactly how the furniture will look like in your uh, room before actually uh, buying it. So I feel like it could be very helpful uh, in order to make a decision, buying decision, right? So other than uh, interior design, AR is also being used in the uh, fashion industry. Uh, so what they are trying to do now is that uh, they call it the try before you buy. So the user or the customer can actually, you know, try on different pair of clothes before even, uh, you, know, you don't even have to use the, the fitting room and you can actually use something that is uh, AR mirror over here uh, before making your decision on buying the clothes or not. Okay, so uh, are there any questions so far? If you have any question, do use the chat box. So if there's no further question, let's head to the uh, third quiz. So you can scan or use the link below. Okay, let's go through your answers. Okay, which type of device is commonly used to experience AR in industrial application, allowing workers to access information hands-free? So the keyword here is hands-free. Yeah? Uh, so uh, the answer is uh, augmented reality glasses. So in smartphone, you actually need to use your hand to uh, operate the smartphone, whereas in using an AR glasses, uh, it gives you an hands-free experience. Okay. And the second question is, which industry has adopted AR for try before you buy, and it's uh, it's widely used in the fashion industry nowadays. 
Okay. Okay, so last week we also had tried a content creation in here. We went through uh, the content creation process. And uh, so just to recap, uh, intermediate and advanced content creation can be done using software such as uh, Unreal Engine and uh, Unity, uh, where typically it uses something called uh, AR Core for Google, as in Android, in AR Kit for Apple. So there are two similar uh, platform development framework. It's just that AR Core is used for Google, Android, and AR Kit is used for Apple iOS. So last week, I have tried creating content using a software called uh, Adobe Arrow. And uh, the second one is actually called Onyrix, uh, which we'll actually be trying today. Uh, I'll be guiding you to uh, how to create an AR content using this platform. So uh, Onyrix and Adobe Arrow has a uh, both have advantage and disadvantage, but they are well they are both of them are suited for beginner. So last week when you tried Adobe Arrow, it it was a very simple uh, software, very easy to use. Just that the I think the biggest drawback is that uh, it's not uh, it's only really available for iOS. If you use uh, Android, uh, you can't really view it in AR space. So what I'm going to show you today is the Onyrix platform, the second one down here. It's the advantage is that it's a totally web-based uh, platform, meaning you don't have to download anything. Uh, you just use a browser. So you can use your browser, your laptop browser to create the content, whereas uh, you can also use your phone browser to view the content. So meaning that it doesn't matter if you uh, own an Android or an iOS phone or a tablet, you can uh, use it anyway. Okay. Okay. So um, before we go through the content creation, I'm just going to show you what we'll be creating today. Yeah? So it's it's actually a simple game, as you can see here, where we can uh, tap on the uh, flying object. For example, we have the flapping bird over here. And each time you tap on an object, it will give you a point. So it's a very simple game. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how you can uh, create one and customize one yourself. Okay. So any questions so far before we head towards the content creation? No questions, huh? OK, so. Um, So I'll share a link to you. Y'all can uh, y'all can use this link to access the uh, Onyrix website. So all you have to do is to sign up first, huh? If you uh, have not created an account before, you can also, if you have a Google account, you can just use your Google account. Click on confirm, accept the terms. Uh, the second one, if only if you want to receive any news. Then select your rule. And create your account. If there's any issue creating an account, let us know. Okay, so once you have created your account, you can um, start actually creating content. So what I want you to do first is you hit to the uh, top bar right here, we have the home projects, assets, and library, right? Click on the projects. 
So when you click on the projects, it will show you all your uh, existing projects that you have created in the past. So if you are creating a new account, uh, obviously this will be empty. So uh, what you can do is that you can uh, click on the uh, orange button here, plus create. And you want to select uh, AR scene. I believe you can use an iPad, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to create it also. But uh, I don't think you can create using a phone, though. You can only view it in phone. Just try. You can use your iPad to create content as well. It should be about the same. Okay, so uh, you can tap on create new project. And then call your project. Uh, I can call it anything you want. I'm just going to call it uh, yes, uh, AR training. And then continue to uh, scene creation. OK, uh, there's two methods of tracking uh, AR, as we gone through earlier. So image tracking is exactly the same as a marker tracking. But we're not going to do that for today. Uh, we are going to use the second one, which is the uh, surface tracking. So surface tracking is the uh, markerless AR. And you can call your scene anything you want. I'm just going to call it a uh, scene one. And then you can click on create project and your scene. So when you start your scene, uh, you will be given an empty scene like this here. Uh, to navigate around the software, you can actually uh, hold down your left mouse button to rotate or to orbit around your scene. If you want to pan around your screen, uh, around your scene, you can click on the uh, or hold the right mouse button and drag it to move left, right, and up and down. And to zoom, you can use your uh, scroll wheel. Okay. And over here in the left, you can view some information for your scene. For example, uh, this is my project. I call it the AR training as well as the scene. So you can have multiple different scenes in a single project. But for today, uh, we are only going to go through with a single scene. And uh, once we add in uh, different uh, elements or different objects into our scene, we can start seeing uh, our elements list to start uh, filling up. So for now, we only have a directional light, a light uh, which is the uh, default light. So to bring in a new object to our scene, we can go to the top here in the top left. You have your asset library button. So uh, just click on the asset library. And by default, you should have a bunch of default uh, 3D models. So I may have a bit more here because I've added it myself. I'll show you later how you can add in your, your own one. But for now, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, click on the, or drag on the car and bring it to my scene.
Yeah, just drag it, drag and drop it to your scene. Huh? So to move your object in your scene, we have uh, uh, the move tool up here. You can see here the uh, the arrow here, the four arrows. This is your move tool. So you can click on the, uh, if you can see, there's actually a blue arrow, red arrow, and the green arrow. So blue arrow is your, your uh, Z axis. This is your Y axis, the green arrow. And the red here is your X axis. You can select on the arrow and drag it to whichever axis you want. You can also use the uh, rotate tool up here beside the move tool. So the rotation tool, you can rotate it similarly to the move tool. You can rotate it in the X, Y, and Z axis. OK. So if I want to reset my rotation, I can also go over to my right here, I do have some details panel. So at the very bottom here, I do have the uh, transform. It has three different attributes. So first is the position, the rotation, and the scale. So if I want to reset back my rotation, I can just simply put uh, 0, 0, 0 to all the x, y, and z. Can you all follow along so far? Uh, any issues? No issues, huh? So similarly, if you want to change the position, I can either move from the arrow or I can also move, I can drag here, or I can also manually key in my position. To reset your position, just uh, set everything back to zero, zero, zero. And the third tool we have here is a scale tool. So when you click on the scale tool, I can uh, scale it across any axis. So if I want to scale in the, uh, example, the Y axis, Z axis, or the uh, uh, Z axis. Uh, another thing you can do with the scale tool is that uh, I'm just going to reset it to one, one, one first over here in my right. Uh, if you do want to reset, make sure the lock aspect is uh, turned off. So I can set it to 111. It's just a default scale. But let's say, so just now I was scaling it only in a single axis. But let's say I want to maintain the uh, aspect ratio, right? I don't want it to be a stretch. What I can do is to uh, click on the lock aspect checkbox down here on the uh, bottom right. So now whenever I scale the uh, X axis, all three axes will actually uh, scale uniformly. Okay. All right. So uh, when you do click on an object, other than the transform tool, we do get some other properties as well. And firstly, you can see on the asset info here, if you want to view the asset, you can actually click on the view. And it will show you the 3D model of the uh, asset you have together with some information. So for example, if I do have animations on the uh, 3D model, it will uh, list down animation as yes over here. And I can actually preview the animation. I'll show you, uh, I'll show you all animation later. Uh, but let's just go with a static object for now. Okay, so to view this, uh, oh, sorry, before before we view this uh, scene, uh, there's some other uh, properties that you can uh, that you can adjust as well. For example, in in the uh, display menu here, we do have enable. So it, if it's enabled, that means I can uh, interact with it. I can view it. So uh, anything that you want to view in here, make sure that it is uh, enabled. Um, and also the opacity, how transparent it is. Okay. So to view your scene, there's actually two way of viewing it. So if you're using a PC, for example, uh, or laptop, uh, 
you can actually click on the 3D viewer here. On the top bar here, you have the play button here, the triangle on the top right. And you click on the 3D viewer. Uh, give it some time to load first. And I can actually see my scene here. Okay. So the controls are similar. Uh, drag and drag your left mouse to orbit and right mouse to uh, pan up, down, left, and right. Okay. But of course, we are since we are making an uh, AR scene, we do want to view it in our AR uh, environment, right? So what you can do is that if you just click on close here, so beside the play button here, you also have this QR button on the right of the play button. So just click on it and you can scan it using your, even your iPad as well, uh, your iPad or your phone or your uh, any, any tablets or your phone. Scan through it. And let me just share my phone screen. Okay, so if it does ask you for uh, access to your motion sensors, uh, do click on OK. And it will ask you to move your phone around. So just move your phone around slowly. Yeah? It will, uh, once it has detected a surface, you should be able to see a, a white rectangle. So when, it's, uh, when you see your rectangle, this is actually your anchor point. Uh, to anchor it, I can click on the eight plus button down here. And if you load in your uh, 3D model, so now you actually view it your uh, your 3D model in AR space. So uh, one thing I can do with uh, in the AR mode is that uh, you can actually use your finger to uh, pinch the 3D model to make it smaller. You can even uh, move your 3D model around and scale it bigger and smaller. So if you actually, if you move your phone around, it will remember the uh, phone, the 3D model's uh, position. So it will anchor. So for example, I am anchoring it to my laptop here. So it will remember that my laptop is the anchor position. So uh, are you all able to view it in here? Any issues? Okay, if you can view in AR, then uh, you can just go ahead and close the QR code here. So now we'll try to see how we can create interactive element in our scene. Huh? Uh, but firstly, uh, so since we have brought in our car here, we can see we do have our car listed down as elements here. All right, so now let's say, for example, uh, I want to create an interaction where whenever I click on the car, I want it to move forward, for example. So what I can do is that uh, select on the car, make sure it's highlighted and then you know it's selected. At the bottom here, you can see the events right at uh, the uh, right menu here, bottom right menu here, we do have the events tab. So by default, it's listed as bracket zero because we don't have any events uh, listed down yet. So to create a new event, click on the plus icon. 
and it will ask you to uh, create a uh, what type of event you want. So uh, I do want a click event because I do want to click on the car, select an action. There's many, many different type of action over here. So for now, uh, what I'm trying to achieve is that when I click on the car, it should be able to move forward a, a little bit. So what I can do is that you can scroll down all the way here to position. It's the third last option. Select an element. OK, so I do want to uh, manipulate my car, for example. I do want my car to move forward, so select the car. And then which axis do you want it to move to? Uh, I could say maybe uh, move on the Y axis. And time, this is how long it will be moving forward. Uh, we, we are just going to go with one second for now. And when you're, when you're done editing your action or event, uh, just click on Save. Now you should be able to see that events, you do have a, an event over here, the first event you have created. So to showcase our event, let's hit to our play mode, top, the top bar here. Uh, enter the 3D viewer. It zoom up a little bit. So when I click on the car, okay, it does move up a little bit. You do have to check on the uh, axis. So let's see if I want to move it forward. Uh, you can see here blue is forward. So it's supposed to be Z axis instead. So to edit my uh, the event I did earlier, I can just press on the events button here. And then press on the, uh, the event we created earlier, which is the click position. So instead of the Y axis, I do want it to move in a Z axis. So I can put Z as one, for example, and Y reset it back to zero. And click on save. Uh, let's test it another time, 3D viewer. So now it moves forward. And when it moves forward, I can click it even another time to make it keep moving forward. Because I have uh, set it in a way that whenever I click it, it will move its position by one unit. But let's say what if I want it to move uh, forever, right? Uh, infinitely. Uh, so what I can do is that uh, edit my events earlier another time. So click on the event and then click on uh, position here. So what I can do is I can over here in the time bar, you know, right here, you can set the loop option to turn on the loop option. Okay. Then click on save. And when you go to your play button or your 3D viewer button here to test it. So now when I click on it, it will be going forward indefinitely. They don't stop actually. So again, if you want to test this uh, interaction in AR, you can just uh, click on the QR button and just scan it back. on OK if it asks you for uh, any permission. And one more time, you have to do the uh, 
move your phone around slowly until it takes an anchor position. And then click on the plus, hit plus uh, icon to anchor your car. But now I I click on my car this now. So to okay, if you want to like reset your uh, your scene, what you can do is that you can tap on the you have the three dots icon in your top right, and click on that. You can actually click on reset. So you can anchor back another one more time. So now when I click on the uh, car, it will move forward even in the space. So uh, any questions so far? Okay, so uh, there's a lot more we can do actually on our scene. Uh, now I'm gonna show you how to bring in uh, external object maybe you might own a 3d models or maybe you might download it from uh, other websites so uh, one website that you can use is that uh, so it's called sketchfab uh, just going to share the link on the chat box So Sketchfab is actually a collection of many, many different um, 3D objects uh, uploaded by users. Um, so what you can do is that, uh, for example, if I want to bring in a bird model, 3D model, I can search for bird, right? And you do have filters over here in the top. So for example, if I want, uh, if I'm looking for a free 3D model, and downloadable 3D model, I can tick on the downloadable. And if I want it to be animated, I click on the animated. Okay. So when you hover over any 3D model, you can see there is actually like two button here. It's either the animated or the uh, 3D model here. Oh, is my is my screen visible? No? Okay. All right. So, uh, if it is a paid model, you will see there's a cash icon available on the store. Otherwise, if it's a free model, there'll be a download icon. So you can search for any like model you want. Uh, I'm just uh, going to use. This bird model here, I can share the link to you. So when you open a model, you can actually, uh, to download the model, you can scroll down here. There's a button here to download 3D model. You do have a bunch of different options, but uh, what I'm going to use is the, uh, the FBX format over here so you can just click on download fbx now just give you some time to download first So you don't necessarily have to use like the bird one I have here. You can search for any 3D model you want and download it. But just make sure that it's uh, animated by uh, checking on the animated checkbox.
Okay, so kalau back to our onyrix. We go to our asset library. Uh, let me just... To bring in a new asset, I can click on the Add Asset button. So you can drag and drop uh, any 3D model, or you can select uh, from your file. Um, okay, so if it's a zip file, you can just immediately, you don't have to extract it first, you can just uh, Click on the zip file and just uh, include it in the uh, box here. When you're done, click on Upload Asset. And you can see here if it's loading. Once it's loaded, um, you can see the image here. I'm just going to give it some more time if uh, you guys have not loaded it yet. So once it's loaded, you can just drag and drop, similar to the car we had earlier. So to reduce the size, I can click on the properties, go to the scale, and maybe I'm just going to use a 0 0.5 for now. Okay. So to view it, again, to test it, I can just uh, click on the play here. And you can see by default, whenever you bring in an uh, animated 3D model, it will play the animation by default. Okay. So uh, again, now I want you to click on the uh, asset you have. To view the asset, you can go over to your, to your right bar here and click on Asset Info View. To view the animation, I can uh, select. So whenever you download, like for example, the FBX file earlier, it comes included together with the animation. So to quickly view the animation, I can click on uh, the second uh, option here. So it depends on whoever uploaded it. it uh, they, so this person had named it, named it Arbature, which is the uh, animation name. Uh, it's basically the bird flapping animation. But what if I don't want the uh, animation to play uh, right when we start the uh, scene, right? So what we can do is that just click on anywhere uh, to, to select the surface. To make sure you have selected the surface, you can either look at the properties here should be bracket surface and there shouldn't be any highlight. Sometimes uh, you might have accidentally selected other object instead. So make sure it's surface here. And we go to the event. We can see here there's already a event created for us by default. So tap on the event. And you can see here that Onyrix has automatically created an event type on scene load. So on scene load will be triggered uh, as the name suggests, uh, it will be triggered when the scene is loaded. Okay, so they have set it to uh, play the animation and the bird amateur. So this was what's set uh, previously. 
But let's say if I don't want it to uh, to play the animation, what if I want to play the animation with a pressable button, right? So what you can do is just to uh, delete delete this uh, trigger, the on scene load trigger. And let's search if there's a button here, shape uh, buttons. Or you can just use the uh, the launch. So if you go to the 3D model here, these are filters for different type of object, default object. I'm just going to use the, uh, maybe I'll use the start or the play icon. Move it a bit upwards. Okay, so similarly to other objects, we do have the properties for the 3D play icon as well. Uh, you can uh, scale it, maybe if you want to make it a bit smaller. Uh, I might make it to like 0.5 size. And then to create a trigger button, what you can do is that by having the uh, this button here selected, go down towards the event and click on the plus icon. I do want to click event. What is it? An action type. We do want to play the animation, right? The bird flapping animation. So. Uh, look for play animation. All right, select an element. So what kind, what object animation do I really want to play? So it's not really the car or the icon, but uh, I do want to animate the bird. So select the bird. And then do select which animation you want to play. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, the bird flapping animation was named as uh, armature here. I do want to make sure that it is uh, looping, as in it uh, carries on the uh, animation infinitely. So I can click on the loop checkbox here. And click on save. So now to test it, I can go to the 3D viewer. Okay, once the scene is loaded, I can click on the plus icon and it will start to flap its wings. Okay, so can you all follow so far? Uh, any question, anything you're not clear, just uh, let me know in the chat box. All good? Okay, so similarly, what if I want to uh, create like a stop animation? Uh, so unfortunately, there's no like toggle animation option. So what we can do is that to create a second button. So I'm just going to use the stop icon here. Uh, move it a bit closer there. So again, if you are as a reminder, you can uh to search for to for an object you can go to the asset library here and you have various filters over here i'm using the uh, 3d filter to search for buttons okay so in the stop button similarly i do want to make the scale a bit smaller so 0 0.5 And similarly, uh, with the stop button uh, selected, I do want to go down to my events, click on plus. Uh, event type, maybe click, action, 
So that's not we did play animation. Now what we want to do is the opposite, which is the stop animation option. Uh, select element. Similarly, we want to stop the bird animation. So click on the bird flying animation or whatever animation you might have uh, included and select which animation you want to stop. And you can click on save. So to test it, I can click on play. Now when I click on the play button, it will play the animation. And when I click on the stop button, it should stop its animation. OK. So again, to view in your space, uh, it's simple. You can just click on the QR code and scan the uh, QR code to test if it's working in AR. Click on OK if you ask for permission. Move your phone slowly until it finds the anchor. When it finds the anchor, click on the red plus button. Okay. Keep it back to the view. Once I press the play button, it will start clapping its wing. And when, when I click on the stop button, it will stop clapping. Okay, all good so far. If any question, we ask in the chat box. Okay, so what if I want to? Uh, now we have the bird flapping around. So uh, I'm just going to uh, make it so that uh, our bird starts animation uh, right when the uh, scene starts. So similarly, we can do the uh, click on the uh, empty space right here. So you should see the property surface. And then under the events tab, uh, click on plus. And event type on scene load. I do want to play animation. Click on the bird animation. Select your animation and click on loop. Click on save. So this is what we had earlier before we deleted it. So when you click on play, It should be, it should start the animation immediately when the scene starts. But at the same time, I can also use my buttons here to control 
the animation. So to add audio, we can also add audio, but uh, unfortunately, we don't have uh, any default audio on the website. At, uh, but I'll show you how to add it later. We, we will be doing our simple game later, and I'll show you how you can uh, utilize the existing audio. Okay, so we have our bird uh, fly, flapping and swing around. But let's say if we, at the same time, we do want it to like uh, rotate and move around, right? So what we can do is that uh, similarly, uh, when you click on the surface, I want to create a second event. So we already have a single event, which is the uh, animation of the bird flapping. I do want to create a second event by clicking on the plus icon. Similarly, on scene load, action type. Now I want to look for rotation because I want to spin the bird on its own axis. Rotation. Select on the bird and select which axis you want it to rotate to. So I'm just going to set, uh, test it with the Y axis. And I can set on loop. So maybe I'll try it if I need to be some my axis. Set up. Uh, I can click on save and click on play. So now you can see the bird is flapping its wing and it's also rotating around. Huh? Right. So anyone having any trouble so far? All good. If you have any question, don't be shy. You can just ask question. Okay. So now we have it rotating around its own axis already. But what if I say if I want it to orbit? around my surface so for example like how a planet's orbit around the sun maybe i want my bird to uh, orbit around this car or the center of my uh, scene for example uh, so by default we don't actually have an orbit option but there is actually a, a simple trick that we can do to uh, create the orbit effect and uh, to uh, illustrate it i'm just gonna hopefully this is clear So for example, if you do have a for example, we have our bird just now, and to rotate it, and I click on the rotate button, what it actually does is this that it rotates around its own axis, right? But uh, let's say if I do want this whole thing to orbit around the entire scene, what I can do is that I can actually place this bird inside a transparent box. Now what if I rotate the box around? Nice bird, yes, thank you. <laughs> So when I rotate the uh, box around, uh, what it does is that now the entire box is rotating, right? So the, even the bird inside the box will start rotating. But instead of using its own axis, I'm actually rotating it around the box axis. So it, it will appear as if the box is rotating, is orbiting around the box. To demonstrate this, I can actually show you in Onirix itself. So how we can create the transparent box is that uh, 
you can uh, on your left here you can see all your um, uh, every elements you have at the moment inside your scene so what i can do is that i can create this new collection button here under the elements tab should be the second button here a uh, new collection so i can call it anything maybe for example a uh, rotating box and what you want to do is that you have to drag this bird flying or your 3d object inside the rotating box folder so now my bird is actually contained within the transparent box okay so to demonstrate it a bit easier i'm just going to scale down the bird here maybe to 0 0.25 okay so now we want to rotate both our bird as well as the transparent box okay so what we can do is that uh, similarly select on the surface under the events click on plus click on scene load and i want to rotate i do want to select my so just now we have selected our bird right now we want to select our box instead so we can uh, check on the rotating box and set the axis you want to spin it to i'm going to select the y axis so uh, maybe i'll put 90 degrees as well and uh, set it to loop so when you're done you can click on save and then click on play So now we can see the bird is rotating on its own, but it's orbiting around also. This is because it's actually inside a transparent box and the transparent box is rotating. You all get it so far? Okay. Okay, so if there's no further question, I can show you how to create a simple game. So to create a game in Onirix, typically it does require some coding, uh, but I'm not going to go through coding uh, for today uh, because coding, uh, we don't have enough time for coding. Coding will require much more than a two hours uh, lesson. But what we can do is that uh, Onirix have provided us templates that we can use so we can edit from the template itself. So uh, head back to our Onirix page here, the main page menu, under the onirix.com. And what you can see here is the experience library. So if you have login, it'll look something like this also, experience library. And we can see there's many, many different templates that Onirix has provided us with. Uh, but we do want to filter it to a game. So what you can do is that under the filter here, we can select uh, from the all sector, change it to gamification. How to delete a set that you don't need. Uh, okay, so when you select, for example, if I want to delete the car, I can click on the delete button on your keyboard or use the three dots here and click on delete element. Uh, but one thing is that if you're deleting, right? So for example, if I delete my the bird here, uh, instead of deleting, let me just copy it first. You can also copy your uh, 
estudiar. Uh, sorry, you can't actually copy, but you can actually copy the position, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, it's under the uh, duplicate. When you click on the three dots here, you have the duplicate element here to duplicate your second. Uh, so if I have my second bird here, I can actually move it outside of the view. Now let's say if I don't want this uh, the first bird anymore, I can just uh, delete it by clicking on the delete key or selecting three dot and delete element. Know that even if you delete your assets, when you go to your asset library here, the top left here, uh, when I click on all, uh, when you go to my assets, you can still see your asset that you have added in. Okay. So whenever I want to add it, I can just like drag it back inside. Okay. All right. So uh, back to our experience library. Uh, do click on the filter by gamification. By default, it's in all sector. We want to select a uh, gamification somewhere down there. This is actually a list of uh, template games that Onyrix providers us with. And I'm going to select the AR games, hunt and destroy this red one over here. So open it and you can click on add to studio. Okay, so you might get something like this uh, in your project, please. Uh, you should have your early project, and this is a second project you have. But to open the project, you can just uh, click on it. Okay, and this is actually a simple game. So to test it out, you can either click on the play button, or you can even use the QR code to launch in AR mode. It should give you like a uh, box here, prompt you look around uh, to give you the instruction. Actually, I'm going to try this in AR mode. Okay, so I'm just going to skip the instruction, or you can also click on next. So when the game starts, you will see a red button floating around. All you have to do is click on the red button. Now you are you are given like 15 seconds to tap on all the uh, red button. So the more you click, the more score you get. and it ends within that 15 seconds. So what we are going to do is that to edit this game into something that uh, we can use uh, at other objects, for example, the bird object we used earlier, okay?
Okay, to replace an object, it's uh, really simple. What we can do is that, for example, if I click on the uh, if I want to click on the uh, object. When you do click on an object, it should highlight it in your uh, element list on your top left here, uh, sorry, in your uh, left side here. And as you can see, we have many, many different objects created here by default. You do want to make sure that the logo is selected, huh? not the destruction. The destruction here is actually the smoke effect uh, that uh, that triggers when you click on the, uh, when you click on the object. But uh, I don't want to edit that. For now, I do want to edit on the logo, so make sure that the logo is selected. And under the properties here, you can see on asset info, what I can do is to click on replace. So, for example, maybe if I want to bring in my bird, I can select on the bird and click on replace at the top. So sometimes it can be like very very small, so you won't able you won't be able to see. Uh, all you need to do is head over to the properties here under the scale. You might want to scale it up a bit. I'm just going to scale it to one for now. And yeah, it's much more visible. So now when I click on play. this tap on the button to start and you can see that uh, the bird has replaced one of the buttons we can see here now i have 50 points huh? when i click on the bird similarly i do get 50 points 100 points which means that all the game logic remain intact even though you change the uh, 3d object there's just one small thing i do want to change uh, which is I do want the bird to flap. So uh, click on the surface here. And similarly, click on events plus add in, add in a new event. On scene load, play animation. Uh, we do have to find, okay, uh, sorry, before that, click on cancel first. And I do want to look through my element. So this one is still called Onirix Logo 2. So uh, the way that this game is coded is that uh, to actually gain score, whatever objects uh, has to be named Onirix underscore logo. Onirix underscore logo has to be at the top, at the start of the name of the object. So let's say if I do want to edit the name, for example, I can use onirix underscore logo underscore bird. This is still okay because as long as the onirix underscore logo is maintained at the starting of the name of the object. Okay. So for example, if I do like if I just name it bird, if I just name it bird at this, it wouldn't uh, recognize it anymore. So uh, do make sure that it's uh, onirix underscore logo and underscore uh, anything you want anything else you want to name it okay so once again click on the surface click on events on scene load I do want to play the animation and I do want to select my bird on Eric's logo in the scoreboard. Then select your animation and have it to loop. Click on save. So now when you play it,
skip that button and you can see it's already flapping its uh, wings. So as you can see, when I uh, tap on an object, it actually creates a sound, right? So they have actually included two, I believe there is two sound here. One is called game underscore music and another one is called a crash. So to uh, include a background sound, uh, similarly, I can uh, I think in this template they have included a few uh, default uh, sound. And you can also add in your asset uh, similarly how, like how we uploaded our 3D model. If you do have your own background music, you can upload it in the uh, in this tool over here. So to set my uh, background music, I'll go through the second one because on the crash music. So what they have done here is that when you click on an uh, an object, for example, the logo over here, under the events, you can see that they have a play event. Should be the fourth option over here. Or if you want to, if this is not there, uh, if you do want to add in your own music, you can also click on the uh, plus icon. On the plus icon, uh, click, select action type, be play. You do have a few uh, options for audio control. You can play or pause, but I do want you to play. And you do have your selection of music. So I do want to play the crash music. Let's say if you do want it to loop the music forever, you can click on loop. But however, I don't want my crash music to be looping. So uh, I'll just leave it disabled for now and click on save. So now whenever you click on the uh, uh, on the uh, button over here, it will play the uh, crash music. So for the background music, I can click on my surface here. And when I click on plus, on scene load, similarly to play, select element, I can put in my game music or any other background music you have uh, included and do set it to loop and click on save. So now it will loop through the music as long as the game is ongoing. So any question so far? Okay, so earlier I did say that uh, you know, creating the game might be a bit complicated because it does use a bit of coding. Uh, specifically, it uses something called JavaScript. Uh, I'm not going to really show you like uh, how to like create JavaScript from scratch, but I can maybe show you uh, some simple modification. So to edit the code, what you can do is that in the top bar here, beside the QR button, there's also the code editor in this icon here. So when you click on the code editor, you automatically get all the because we are using a template, we do get our uh, all of our code built in here. So one simple thing that you might uh, want to change is that. So under here you can see there's three options: there's HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. All these three is used to create a web page. Okay, and since Onyrix is web based, we are using all three of these for our game. Okay, so under the JavaScript, the JS here. What you can do is you can scroll down. 
until you find this initial time option. Okay. Uh, by default, it's set to 15, meaning you have 15 seconds to complete the game. But maybe if I want to make it longer, I can create 60, for example. I just uh, replace it by 15 to 60 and click on save. And then I can click on close. Now to test it, I can click on the play. Now I'm actually given 60 seconds to complete the game instead of the default shifting. Okay, so uh, if you're interested, uh, you may look through, like this is more advanced, but if you're interested, you may uh, go through JavaScript tutorials and uh, you, may, you might be able to actually use it in the uh, Onyrix platform. Any question? Okay, so if there's no further question, I would like to announce uh, our viewer, our sorry, our winner for our quiz that we had earlier. Okay, so we had three quizzes earlier, and we have three different winners for each. Uh, Okay, so quiz one, the winner is Mifsal Salihin. So congratulations, Mifsal. Quiz two, uh, Ahmad Izni. Congrats. And quiz three, Kian Wong. Congratulations also. Uh, so for the winners, the three winners, please do share your uh, contact information in the chat box. And we will contact you uh, later for the uh, how to obtain your prizes, okay? So for the three names, uh, Mifsal Salihin, Ahmad Izni and Ken Wong. Let me share your uh, contact information uh, in the chat box. Okay, uh, another reminder is that for those of you who have joined us last week, also remember we had a space uh, exploration challenge uh we are actually extending the challenge all the way up to uh 31st of august so you may uh, submit your uh, if you have not done so you may submit your creation okay we are using the same google form we shared Okay, so uh, please do share your contact info. Huh? And Tim, if Sal Salihin, you have just joined back, please do share your contact info. Okay, so any question before I close the session? Okay, so if there's nothing else, uh, let's conclude our session today. Uh, okay, we have learned uh, what AR augmented reality is. We've also learned how AR can be used in various different industries, namely in the education sector, healthcare, gaming, advertising, uh, as well as uh, interior design and fashion as well. Uh, and besides that, we have also learned how to create AR content that can be viewed in our smartphone and tablets. 
uh, using a platform called Onirix. So I do hope you guys uh, explore even more of this. Uh, it's a really powerful platform. So I, I do hope you, uh, you'll you enjoy it and explore more options, create more content for AR. Um, and yeah, with that, uh, I would like to thank all of you for joining us today. Uh, thank you for your uh, participation. And yeah, hope to see you guys another time. Thank you very much and uh, goodbye.